Good evening, listeners and viewers. My name is Dirty Jen Canary. Welcome to Vintage Key Studio, which is here. I am here, and this is the Hona Pianet T. Now, this is uh, my absolute all-time favourite keyboard instrument, I think. I've only just uh, recently acquired this. And... Um, this is a, a later model of the Pianet, uh, dating from roughly 1977. Um, the earlier models were in, in production from, I think, I believe, 1960-ish, up until then, and they had a, a different inner mechanism. So we won't be talking about the old versions today. This is the, the, the newer versions. The old versions had um, slightly different pickups, uh, with, uh, variable capacitance pickups, and... Uh, a different method for um, creating the, the note with with, with a, a reed and some leather on on the on the the, the actual key, whereas this one uh, uses a metal reed and a rubber sucker designed by NASA, or so Wikipedia told me. A bit of background on the Pianet itself. Um, it was designed by a guy called Ernst, Zaka Z Ernst Zacharias. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, he also designed the Hona Sembolet as well, which was a very, very similar keyboard. Uh, the difference between the Sembolet and the Pianet. The Sembolet plucked a reed as opposed to the, the Hona Pianet, which is kind of sort of like, invoked it or suck, sucked it sucked the reed to make it go in fact there's an episode of the Muppets possibly one of the, the mid 90s ones I think it's pigs in space and they're all walking around or running around frantically and all the pigs have got I can't remember if it's table tennis bats or or spoons or something like that on the end of their snouts and they go and they'll go and that's how this works you press down a key and there's a little um, sucker uh, that's pulled up. So there's a reed there and this rubber su suction thing goes and it makes the reed go ding. So I'll show you in a minute when I open it up. So um, it's a, a fantastic thing because it's just, in, it's in a, a, a case. This is the, obviously these are just like a keyboard legs. It's just basically just a case, a bit like a small guitar case with a lid in it and you can just carry it around with you on the bus all you need to do is just plug it into an amp and you're you're ready to go it hasn't got any pedal or anything or any volume you can always obviously put a volume uh pedal with it if you want to but it's all completely mechanical um electromechanical um and for something that's so simple i think it sounds absolutely bloody amazing I've been playing this non-stop for about a week and a half. Um, Hona pianets have been um, used on all sorts of stuff. Obviously, I'm quite into the Beatles, so I, I will tell you that they, they used a, a pianet on um, The Night Before song, which was on the, the Help album and soundtrack, which starts off... Um, can really hear the kind of growly bass on it as well now i always thought that they, they used it on i think on you like me too much as well on the same album um and they also probably i haven't been able to work out exactly but probably very very likely used it on i am the walrus um in an earlier video i said that it was a a, a Wurlitzer electric piano on i am the walrus and it well could have been but thinking about it the Beatles had one of these in their collection of instruments. And as far as I know, they didn't have a Wurlitzer around, certainly in the sort of early to mid-60s. But they might have got one in, because they would have hired instruments in. But um, the fact that they actually had a, a, a pianet on the, in their studio photos makes me think that it probably was a, a pianet, one of the early ones, not like, like a new-looking new one like this. Um, and um, various other models of this were made in fact there was loads of models of this made 
or the, all of the pianets from, from the 60s onwards. They had various uh, sort of styles and designs. Some of them were, they were sort of like wooden, um, natural wood finish and different finishes. It was a bit like hammered organs. Hammered organs had loads of different wood finishes and spindly legs like a, uh, was it a spinet or, or, a, uh, or the big chunky looking one, the studio sort of one, like an M102. So a lot of these organs had different names and numbers, but that was only to do with what wood they were made out of. It wasn't that they were a different organ. And it's the same with, with the pianet. Um, and a lot of them had amplifiers, little amplifiers built into them, little speakers. Um, in the 70s, when this came out, the pianet T, they also had the pianet M. Um, and the M was the version that had, um, I think it had a, a sort of a front here with two speakers in it and a little lamp built inside. So that was that one. They also did a, a, a pianet combo as well, which was the first one that was done in a, a case without any legs. You could stick it on top of things and play it on top of organs and stuff. So anyway, yes. This is the pianet T and uh, pianetti. Listen to that wonderful growl. And it's quite touch sensitive as well. Not like the, the mechanism as I'd imagine a assemble it would be, which is basically just one sound all the time, no matter how hard you hit it like a harpsichord. So it's quite expressive. It's, it's very like a Fender Rhodes sort of sound, but um, a sort of quite a lot less clunky. like a cross between a Fender Rhodes and a Wurlitzer, really. But anyway, let's have a look inside. Now, I've already, I already unscrewed the screws here. Um, as you can see, there's not really much to it. There's just the, these are the reeds here, the, the tuned, different tuned reeds. Then you've got each key, and each key has got, these um, plastic suction pad stuck to them and um, when I first got this some of the notes were a bit dull and, they, and I wondered if maybe the pickups had gone but it turned out it was the, the suction pads were um, uh, just a bit dirty and they need to be very clean um, to work and also the the reeds need to be as, as tarnish free as possible so they, this has got a bit of tarnishing on it but I went through with it. if I just take one of these these suction things off you can see there can you see that it's it's basically just as it's got a bit of dirt on it but that's it's just a piece of rubber and that's it and oh no I've lost it oh the end mm. there we are this pianet came with a, a skewer inside it uh, I'm not sure if it's actually was originally provided with one of these but it's quite useful for sort of if you need to do anything with the pickups because you don't want to be touching them with with metal or anything because the uh, it'll make a hell of a noise and could, could damage something as well because it's all all sort of very very delicate metal parts here but anyway so this this rubber sucker um Basically, that's all it is. It's just a piece of rubber with a hole in and a flat, flat bottom to it. Um, and if you ever get one of these and some of the notes don't sound very good and they're a bit quiet, rather than dashing out and going, oh, I'm going to buy myself a whole new set of rubbery things, just give them a bit of a wash in some fairy liquid, very um, small amount of fairy liquid in some water, or sort of slightly warm water, tepid water, and just clean them all off let them dry um, and then on the the reeds themselves what I did is I put some contact switch cleaner and then just with a fiberglass brush I just sort of brushed off the bit that was going to get um, sucked by the the rubber stick it back on again and good as new so that saved me about probably a hundred pounds sending off for a new set so you can make it just by just
So this Ernst Zacharias guy must have gone round the place with loads of different materials and, and just been going, hmm, pot makes a good sound. And then one day he went, oh, and then he thought, I wonder if that would work. And sure enough, there we go. So anyway, yes, the the reed is sucked by the suction pad and then the sound is picked up by the electromagnetic pickup. Very similar to a Fender Rhodes design. And they're all wired up all together and they all go all the way to the end over here. Um, and you can see this tiny little strand of wire here. And then I think it branches off into two wires there and goes into this, two, like, like basically the, the width of a hair. So you don't want to get in there and knock them because you'll never be able to put them back again. And they go into the output transformer there, which is then wired up um, to an unbalanced out. Uh, so you've just got a um, signal and the ground wire there. And um, that's it. So it's all very simple, but but um, fantastic. And um, as I often wanted to have a keyboard that I could take around with me that was actually a real instrument, not just a plastic lump that made sounds, you know, like a, an electronic digital thing. And I always say it's it's quite horrible sitting playing what's basically as as um, organic f to the touch as a an iron, ironing board you want something that's got a bit of something with to it so you can kind of feel because this does work without the without being plugged in if i just unplug it it sounds a bit like a dulcitone sounds like a dulcitone a late Victorian invention that was like a an acoustic Fender Rhodes sort of thing. Obviously you can't hear the lower notes because of the properties of the um, the case itself. If the case had a great big bass sort of to it with a box underneath you you'd be able to hear the bass notes because it would be able to vibrate through them but anyway that's the Hona Pianet T um not a lot more to say to it other than thank you for watching don't forget to like and subscribe and subscribe and subscribe to Vintage Keys if you want to um, see any more videos we've got um two or three new organs over here and here that I'm still working on but we're going to have them done as a feature and I've got to do part two of the reha as well because that's sitting over there begging to be done uh, which is very complicated indeed um, but anyway this has been the Hona PNX T check out all the links and stuff underneath uh, for our website and various things and etc 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 if you'd like to further support the studio please check out the links below for for the Patreon and the the uh, PayPal stuff um, any uh, donations we take are invested in the studio and into the running of our channel and um, they uh, pay for things like um, new keyboard stands because this one's being held up by a screwdriver so anyway that's been me dirty gen canary i'm off to catch a train i'll see you later <laughs>